Hello everyone, welcome to the Ecamm channel. This is Xue Hang. Really excited that the number of the subscribers to our Ecamm channel is growing and we get many comments suggesting the topics that our audience may be interested. So this time I'm going to introduce in detail about how to analyze the cyclic photometry data. When we collect the CV data, we collect the current as a function of potential or voltage. If we plot directly, we get a CV curve 1 as shown here. The shape of the CV will give us information about whether this electrode is capacitive or battery-like. If you are interested to learn more about how to correlate the shape of the CV to the type of the energy storage devices, please watch our tutorial 1. However, if we plot like this, the mass loading of the material are not reflected on the CV curve. So, in the CV curve 2, we can normalize the current by its mass. Then, the Y label will be current density. Here, we should be more careful about the unit conversion. For example, if our current is in mu ampere and our mass is in milligram, then the current density should be 10 to the negative 3 ampere per gram. Further, the curve still does not reflect the scan rate on the CV curve. So if we would like to know the energy storage capacity, we should also know the scan rate, like how large the scan rate is. Then we can further transfer the CV curve into this third type. But before we doing so, keep in mind that we can only do so when we know this material is capacitive, not battery type. As now, we will have the units of Verat's program for the Y label. The way to transfer from raw data of ampere to the specific capacitance for us per gram is also very simple. So you can just do like this. The current divided by mass and the scan rate. The unit conversion should also be always kept in mind. Now from this type of CV curve, we can directly observe from the Y label about how large the capacitance is. If we would like to have a general comparison of the capacitance between different materials, we can simply put them all in the same plot and see which curve gives the largest area. The CV curve for the same material could be a lot different due to the fabrication methods and the different type of the devices we use. For example, an ideal defectively single-layer graphene electrode should have a perfect rectangular-shaped CV as it is ideally electrical double-layer capacitive. However, three other CV curves could be observed in practical experiments. Von Bakhti and his colleagues have suggested a way to interpret these kind of differences by building physical equivalent circles composed of capacitive and resistive elements. A blunt CV curve indicates there is an equivalent series resistance here. A slant CV curve is due to equivalent parallel resistance. And a blunt and slanted CV curve is due to the existence of both elements. When there is a presence of a series resistor, the area is smaller than the ideal CV. So this indicates that the practical capacitance is actually smaller than the idealized case. Before I end today's recording, I would like to thank you all for your support, subscribes, comments, and likes. As you may notice that we update every Sunday as our speakers and instructors are all researchers working the lab full time, and we spend our weekend for free knowledge sharing. The videos in our Ecamm channels are completely free and only for educational purposes and knowledge distribution. Subscribe us and like our videos will certainly motivate us to go further. If you have any questions and suggestions or find anything that conflict of interest in any type, so just leave us some comments. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.